unprecedented times. That's what they tell us we've been living in for the last year. Unprecedented, meaning there's no precedent, no similar occurrence, never happened before. So when you suddenly find yourself running a business in unprecedented times, what are you supposed to do? You ignore the headlines and you go looking for a precedent. And that's exactly what this CEO did. What she learned from the past helped her almost double her revenue and generate $60 million while so many of her competitors struggled to stay in business. What did she do? What precedent did she uncover? And what can we learn from her experience to make our business better, pandemic or not? <laughs> Let's unbox this and find out. Stemble is the founder of Farm Girl Flowers, and I ordered these on Friday to brighten my wife's day. Aww. Now, when the pandemic shut down her San Francisco business in March of 2020, Christina had 12 hours to figure out a way to keep her company afloat. 12 hours. Yeah, remember last week's episode about adding a time constraint? 12 hours? Yeah, I'd say that's a pretty tight timeline. She'd already sent 197 employees home and she had hundreds of thousands of dollars of flowers to deal with. As she pondered her next move, she gave her company only a 10% chance of surviving. 10%. Coming into 2020, she'd predicted 60% year-over-year growth, and overnight, that optimism wilted. Now, the experts will tell you that if you want your team to make progress, to innovate, or to be more creative, you need to do one thing. Normalize failure. Yeah, they say you need to get comfortable with it, even celebrate it. Yeah, fail fast, they say. Now, here's what I found after researching dozens of companies, including Christina's and their team's reaction to the pandemic. They don't normalize failure or celebrate it. What really happens is that their risk tolerance changes instantly. Think of it like this. You have a new idea for your business, right? Yeah, a new idea right here. It's a great new idea, but it's high risk, and business as usual is low risk. Now, convincing your team to embrace this new idea is very hard because, well, it's high risk. So what happens? Well, we, we do nothing. We need to actually tip the scales so that the high risk option feels lower risk. Yeah, so before the pandemic, Christina's business as usual should deliver that 60% return on her business. That's what she wanted, a 60% growth. And anything that takes resources away from that goal, like this new idea, looks high risk. But what happened? Well, the pandemic hit, and suddenly the stakes were raised, and we add a new big weight right here. This is the stakes, and they are up higher than ever before. And suddenly, she gave the company only a 10% chance of survival. Not growth, a 10% chance of survival if she sticks with business as usual. The pandemic raised the stakes, and all of a sudden, things changed. Yeah, if you wanna see progress, innovation, or focus from your team, we can't normalize failure. We need to raise the stakes. Suddenly, the scales tip, okay? And the high risk options look lower risk than business as usual. Christina had to find a way to stay afloat, let alone grow. So what did she do? She went looking for a precedent in unprecedented times. Now, quick reminder, this is part three in my four-part series about business people who turned the constraints of a global pandemic into some serious business wins. So if you don't wanna miss next week's episode about the three things you need to make available anytime you want to see innovation, progress, or focus in your team, pandemic or not, subscribe right now and use the secret code FLOWERS for exclusive access. 
Instead of panicking and stalling her progress, Christina embraced the constraints. Remember the financial crisis of 08 and 09? <laughs> well, she went online and looked for her biggest competitors' annual reports from those years. And buried deep inside those annual reports, she found out how they weathered the storm. Their competitor had reported tiny revenue growth, but a massive increase in orders. And she realized that people were ordering more bouquets, but the cheaper ones. So in less than 12 hours, Christina came up with a bunch of high quality bouquets that have lower margin costs. And it turns out there is a precedent in unprecedented times. Suddenly, business as usual seemed like the highest risk option. And she just raised the stakes. She added some constraints. And by the end of the year, Christina hadn't just survived the pandemic. Her revenue grew to $60 million. That's not 60% growth. It's almost 90% growth over 2019. You don't need a pandemic to do what Christina did. All you need to do is tip the scales and make business as usual feel like the highest risk option. Embrace the constraints because constraints breed creativity. Oh, and when everyone tells you there's no precedent, it can't be done, go looking for a precedent. I'll see you next week in my loyalty loop. In the meantime, <laughs> I'm gonna go give these to Elizabeth and see if they brighten her day. I, <laughs> I don't know what she thinks of my flower arranging, but it's a start. Give it a good shot. <laughs>